Hey everybody, it's Mo Bunnell, your host here at Real Relationships, Real Revenue. I'm author of a book called The Snowball System, and I and my teams have trained over 20,000 experts all over the world on sound, efficient, and authentic business development techniques. And I'm joined today by Debbie, Morning, Debbie Mormon. She's U.S. growth leader and market leader for Willis Towers Watson. She was at Aetna for a couple decades before that. Deep technical expertise, but Debbie pairs it with this just amazing um, human side that that she's likable, she's enjoyable to be around, she's super helpful, she's clearly, as, as Adam Grant calls it, otherish. She's always thinking about the other side and, and how she can be helpful to them in one way or another. And in this episode, we cover what the moment, it's really interesting because it goes back to college for her, the moment where she realized growth is great, that business development skills are, are something that she wants to, to focus on. She tells a great story, and at the end of this episode, it's near the end where I think the best of best stuff comes out, where she uh, shares sort of her, her, we go into much deep, more detail right at the end about her personal definition of business development and how she thinks about it, and boy, that is worth hearing and, and watching. Really, really, really good stuff. So before we get into it, know that if you are pressed for time and if developing and deepening relationships is important to you then you can get our most recent thought piece. It's, it gives the seven ways that you can deepen relationships in five minutes or less. Seven ways you can deepen relationships in five minutes or less each. And you get that by going to growbigplaybook.com. Just go to growbigplaybook.com. You sign up, you download it. It happens in 20 seconds, 30 seconds, and uh, you'll be all set. It's really good. We spent a lot of time digging through the research, digging into what we've seen work, in our practical experience over over 15 years working at Bundle Idea Group. And uh, those seven ways to deepen relationships um, are all great and you can do them very quickly. So that's over at growbigplaybook.com. All right, here is Debbie Mormon. Hey everybody, it's Mo Bunnell, your host here at Real Relationships, Real Revenue. And man, I have a treat today. I'm with my good friend, Debbie Mormon. She's one of the best business developers, thought leaders, proactive investors in relationships. I mean, come up with anything that's that's in our system about being helpful and proactive. Debbie, is that? Debbie, thanks for being on the show. Thank you so much, Mo. I'm excited to be here today. Really appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. I, that first question is always a, like, you're like, do you want me to say something back or not? Like, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> this, this is also, it's, it's so fun. And I'm so just delighted to have you on your, on the show. So let's start with this. Um, first question, mm -hmm. Debbie, to you, tell me of the moment, um, and you might have to go back in time pretty far, I don't know, but tell me of the moment when you realized like, hey, this business development thing or this growth skills thing or this um, positive influence thing, whatever we want to call it, um, tell me when you realized, hey, this is, this is something I want to do. This is something I should focus on. Yeah, it's interesting, Mo, because I do have to go very far back in time. Um, as my teenager would say, back to the 1800s when I was in college. But the, the reality is that, you know, like many people, I really fell into business development or sales or growth quite by accident. When I was in college, I was putting myself through school. And honestly, I moved into a cold calling sales job because it paid me 50 cents more per hour. Than the job I had, which was very important at that moment. I had no interest in sales. I thought it was going to be terrifying and horrible. It was terrifying, but not horrible. And it was in the process of literally knocking on doors in, for businesses in Tampa, Florida one summer that I realized that A, what I was doing was trying to identify needs that these companies had and figuring out ways to help them solve them. I probably didn't think of it that eloquently, but I was like, oh, I like solving problems. I like helping people. And so yeah. it made sales, even cold calling, knocking on doors, which is rough, that that was really all I was doing, was trying to find people who had a problem that I could help solve. And that's when the light bulb went on that, wow, I could really do this. And it still meets my passion of what I want to do. So that's when I decided that I was going to shift and focus on moving into professional sales. 
Yeah, I love this in um, solving problems and helping people. And it, it just, I didn't, I didn't plan on bringing this up to everybody, but it just, I just thought of it. You and I both share something in common, like this homecoming king, or what, what do they call it? At <laughs> so I'm, I'm starting to think about I had to bring that up. <laughs> I had to because I think it's funny. It's so yeah, funny. Homecoming but princess tell, at Florida State. That's what because it's you, chief and princess of the Seminole Indians. It's their it's their oh, nomenclature, the Seminole Indians. Yeah, I, I love it. So you were homecoming princess at Florida State. I was homecoming king at Ball State. Not for you, roughly in the I same like genre now, huh? of time. <laughs> now we're out of pockets. <laughs> um, but okay, so that's just a funny thing. But uh, but I have but I did bring it up because I have a feeling helping people probably mm -hmm. puts you in a good position to be elected. You know, with how many mm -hmm. students at Florida State, homecoming princess, and things like that. So it really is. After after you told me that story, it was obvious that you would be you would have been homecoming princess of Florida State. Okay, so solving problems and helping people. You were starting at a young age. So then, um, the, the, where did you take it from there? So so you're 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 knocking on you're doing cold calling. You're knocking on doors as a young person in college. You're starting to think, hey, I might want to do. I, I can do this. Then how did that shift to to all the work you've done since then? Well, what it, it propelled me to take a job out of college with Aetna, and I was very fortunate to spend 26 years there, which is very uncommon um, these days, but it was just a tremendous career and opportunity for me before I transitioned to my current role in consulting about six years ago, Mo. But I was in a professional sales role with Aetna coming out of school and went through an amazing training program there. But... Even at that time, it was the skills part was really, it was just assumed that you had those skills. And so most of the training was all about technical, that you needed to have the technical depth and breadth to be able to work with clients in the healthcare space. And that's so true, but it wasn't until I moved into a national leadership role at Aetna, and I now had a sales force, a national sales force that you know, you realize that it's just as important to focus on the selling skills piece or the business development skills piece. It is a skill as yeah. it is the technical skills. And so once the, you know, the organization came to realize and I came to realize that you need to treat it as a skill and provide the same depth and breadth of training as you would for the technical part, that's when the magic happens. And that's when, you know, I first got connected with you through Grow Big and the Snowball System to bring that to that company and be part mm -hmm. of that rollout. And then when I moved to Willis Towers Watson six years ago, same thing, but very different because now we're in professional services. We're not selling a product like you would in, in my former life. The product mm -hmm. is our expertise, the, the people that we have at our great company. And so same thing. There had not been a lot of focus on the upskilling needed around business development. In fact, in many ways, it was even more needed because you have people here who say, oh, I don't do sales. I'm not a salesperson. That's not what we do. And the reality is what they do and what we do is help our clients solve problems. And once you realize that's really what business development is. It's building relationships to help identify the needs and solve their issues and help support them and walk with them. You don't, you don't have to call it sales, but it's no longer intimidating. And you realize our teams are so good at it naturally. So with a little skill development, I mean, incredible. Well, and, and I want you to comment on this because you saw you you saw this um, sort of over indexing to technical versus the the people side of things. You know, with Grow Big or Snowball System, we're we're not teaching that the, uh, the very specifics around a technical product that a company has or a service offering. You know, they they've got that, but we're teaching the science and the steps of how how relationships are formed. Why do people say yes to one offer and not another? And how do we hack our own habits to, to stay focused on the long term, helping our future self so that we can we can focus on the BD in the short term where, where we might not usually want, we might not usually be able to. We're busy, those things like that. And uh, so those big three things, relationships and opportunities and ourselves are, are sort of the core underpinnings, that, as you know, 
about growing and snowball system. But talk about this idea of why do why do companies tend to just over index on technical training and not on this people side training, like like where all the magic is, I think. Yeah. That's a great question. And I'm not sure I know the answer, but my my own experience is that A, you know, I have been in an industry my whole career that is extraordinarily technical. And if you think about you know, just the legislative changes that happen feels like every every hour or two these days in healthcare. I mean, there's just a lot. And so we naturally attract people who have that um, curiosity and capacity for really being, you know, experts in their fields. And now even more so at Willis Towers Watson, because that's what we're known for. That's what our brand is. And we have some of the most incredible incredibly bright and experienced people that I've ever worked with in my whole career. But you you know, you could spend a hundred percent of every day just focused on the technical and never know it all. So I think when you're faced with limited amounts of time, overwhelming amount of information, and and the need just keeps getting greater for people who have that technical expertise, I think it's natural to over-index there. But what you realize is that as an organization, an organization that needs and wants to grow, you also do have to invest in your people beyond the technical side, not only because it helps the business grow, but I also think it helps our people grow, which also makes them more engaged and helps retain them all the great talent that we have. So to me, it's a twofold. It's, it's a worthy investment, not only because it'll grow the business, but because it's an engagement tool with our people as well. Oh man, that's good. It's funny. I was talking to my wife, Becky, you know, Becky, um, this weekend and she was talking about, man, all these friends I've got that are in big companies, they seem like they have a reorg every nine months. There's a new thing. And it, and it almost feels like everybody or, or sometimes people throw structure at the issue. Like, Oh, if we reorganize from practices to regions or from nine regions to five or, you know, pick your reorg, um, that that will solve our go to market things, but it's you know what I've seen with you and your ability to drive growth and in and help clients in really really meaningful ways. It's more around teaching people the skills. So if you you know on the soft side, obviously in addition to technical, but almost all companies teach the technical skills. So on the soft side, if you well, let's wrap up this episode with this, you know, we're going all the way back to your cold calling and knocking on doors um, in Florida. Back in the day, and then all of your expertise as you've built up at their time at Aetna, Willis Towers Watson, for that listener or that viewer that's out there right now, if they wanted to dial up their soft skills, if they wanted to dial up their ability to, to deepen relationships, to, to have people say yes to them commercially, to hack their own habits, to stay on top of this BD stuff, um, what would be, if they were just starting out or, or, or looking to get better, what would be your one piece of advice you would say to focus on the people side? Gosh, one thing. Hmm. Yeah, you can only pick one. <laughs> you can cheat and have a couple if you want. Uh, no, it's okay. It's okay. I mean, I, I think the reality is, is, is it, it will be a multi-pronged answer, but I think it's, you know, first of all, you just put the, put the word sales out of your mind because I think the word sales conjures a lot of different emotions for people particularly technical experts. It's, you know, they picture doing what I did in college, which was literally, you know, walking outside in the heat of the summer, knocking on doors, which I is a fantastic experience for anyone. And you should do it once in your life, just so you know, you never want to do that again, but it's a great experience. And you realize what's the worst that can happen. But I think it's not retool your brain to think about how, what you're doing in the conversations is you're trying to figure out what people need. And sometimes people need a recommendation on a great restaurant to go to when they're visiting a town. And sometimes they need a, a headier, you know, help with a headier HR issue with their employees about attracting and retaining in the great resignation environment, which is what we're doing right now. But at the end of the day, you're just trying to understand what they need and figure out how you can help. And if you can retrain your brain to think that way, it suddenly becomes much less intimidating because what's the worst thing that can happen? They say, 
I don't need any help. How many people have you met that don't need help with something, right? And will be happy to have it. But if you're approaching it that I'm just here to try to figure out what you need, be a student of your business to understand what it is, and then figure out how we can help. And then it, it's, it just makes the whole process a little easier. And so I think focusing on retraining your brain to think differently, um, you'll go a long way. Debbie, I love it. That's the perfect ending to this episode. Get sales out of your head. Figure out how to how do you get better and better every day at figuring out needs. Boy, that there's a whole bunch there, right? How do you ask questions? How do you mm-hmm. engage? How do you how do you be listen. thoughtful and follow up? How do you listen instead of talking about your own services and products and all that? Like that's just figuring out how you need it sounds like it's this easy thing, everybody. Like, oh, let's figure out. But there's like dozens of skills that roll up into that. And then figure out how you help. There's dozens of skills in that. How do I follow up? How do I offer things right there in the moment? How do I follow up over time? How do I not um how 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 do I not just let the relationship wane if there's nothing commercially right now, but I continue to follow up over time to be helpful over time. Like there's so many skills in there. So Debbie, thank you for that. All right. So people are going to want to follow up with you in some way. Uh, Where should they go? I'd love to connect with people. The best way is probably through LinkedIn at Debbie with a Y, Debbie Mormon, or feel free to email me. It's Debbie.Mormon at WillisTowersWatson.com. Awesome. And we'll put all that stuff in the show notes, everybody. So if you want to, if you, if everybody, if you don't know how to spell Willis Towers Watson or Debbie Morgan, or whatever, we got it. We got it for you. Um, Debbie, thanks for being on the show. Hey, everybody, we've got four more coming up with Debbie. They're going to be awesome. So make sure you follow or subscribe, whatever platform you're on. um, So you can get those and uh, Debbie, we'll see you back right here in the next episode. Thanks, Bo.